Welcome back. We're going to continue working with exploring the concept of Java inheritance with Pokemon. And so we can see right here, we have the beginnings of our inheritance diagram. We're structuring this up. And so up here at the top, we have our abstract base class, our Pokemon class. And we have our data members right here that all of our classes will inherit from that. And then the methods, they are public that everyone gets access to with our constructor, the get types, the two string, and the getters and setters that go along with that as well. And we're using inheritance. So as you can see right here, my ghastly, um, I'm just using no details on that right there. But I'm showing to have a line that connects from here here up to the Pokemon with the arrow pointing to it, showing that Ghastly extends Pokemon. So my Ghastly class I'm working with will have an extension on Pokemon. So Ghastly is a Pokemon. And then if I want to continue that inheritance structure as well, I have Haunter that extends Ghastly. And then Ghastly will extend Pokemon. And then Gengar extends Haunter, which extends Ghastly, which extends Pokemon. And so we have that idea that we have a hierarchical relationship, what we can use to actually talk about how we can build that structure of Pokemon. And then for each of the Pokemon you're working with, you can have that reference on there so you can have your different Pokemon you're in there. Each Pokemon inherit from Pokemon either directly like we have with Ghastly or indirectly like we do with Haunter and Gengar because you can only inherit from one class at a time. And again, when you're talking about using that relationship, the super call, when I want to call up and go to a parent method or call a parent constructor, super parens only goes up to Haunter from Gengar and super dot also only goes from Gengar to Haunter. You can't go all the way up. You can't do super dot super. You have to only go up the path directly to the class above you. And also also, again, Pokemon has no idea that it has subclasses. There's no idea of children in here. And so you only have a one-way relationship indicated by the arrow that goes from Ghastly up to Pokemon or Haunter up to Ghastly. And so that relationship for the extends relationship only goes one way that we're working through that. And by putting together your diagram you're working with when you're designing a class hierarchy so you can actually put together your structure, when you use a visual representation like this using a UML diagram, it's a great way you can have a visualization or understanding so you can explain your concepts not only to yourself with a visual tool and your uh, peers or your boss, your teachers, etc., but it's also a great way to formalize your uh, understanding and your logic so you make sure you have the proper design and add to it as you go along. We'll be using this diagram as well so we can add some more features and functionality to our project as we add to it and work with it. Again, the UML class diagram is a great way we can show that relationship between a class and an inheritance structure. These arrows right here show that the Sphiel inherits from Pokemon, so that means Sphiel can do everything that Pokemon can do, and then we can add any additional functionality to it as we decide to, but it automatically has access to all these methods and the constructor with the super call vis-a-vis -vis the power of inheritance in Java. This is a great way you can design some structures, do some cool stuff. Hope this is helpful. Cheers, and have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.